Hi guys, it's Sophie. So I'm coming to you today with my 10k celebration video um, on my 10k like yay <laughs> video. Um, I asked um, you guys which of 10 videos you'd rather see and it was close, it actually came down to one vote. Um, so the video we're doing today are my favourite updated favourite fiction and non-fictions. I tried to be like harsh on myself and reduce it down. Um, I've still got quite a lot of books. Um, I have five non-fictions so I achieved my my restraint on non-fiction and I think I have eight fiction because I couldn't narrow them down. Um, now I'm not going to talk too much about these books because each of them I could talk about for like hours. Um, so I'm just going to like condense my feeling around the book and tell you a little bit about what it's about so you have a sense but I'm going to try really hard to restrain myself because it could be the mother of all videos otherwise. Okay, so I'm going to do non-fiction first. Um, the first one that I picked on my shelf, and these aren't in order, these are just like, I looked at my shelves and told myself like which of these matter to you. Um, the first one I have is Notes of a Native Son by James Baldwin. Um, these are a collection of essays about race and um, just like life living as a black man. And my God, this book, like there's so many underlying pieces in here that I could, like read out to you guys that I've like absolutely adored um it's just it's just perfect like his writing is beautiful um oh it's just it's just brilliant and like if you haven't started reading this kind of kind of non-fiction before or um you haven't ever read James Baldwin before go and read this book it's so good you won't regret it his writing is just fantastic like I kind of slightly fell in love with him like reading this like intellectually fell in love with him like oh my god like look at your brain sort of thing and a lot of these are linked to that like I think that's what makes a favourite that's what I'm going to say because I'm trying to be quick but yeah Notes on a Native Son by James Baldwin the next one that I have is The Emperor of All Melodies um, by Statham McCurgy and this is a really fat non-fiction book about cancer and this was this was when I thought favorite nonfiction books. One of the first ones that popped up into my head. Probably the first one that popped up into my head. Um, it is big, it is fat, but his writing is so good. He helps you understand like not just the way cancers work, but also like the impact that they have on families and what people are trying to do to to, to fix it and solve it. Um, if you're into medical nonfiction at all, I think this is probably one of my, my absolute favourite um, examples of that. Um, it's a little bit old now, I've, I've read this book a long time ago, but it just sticks in my head so well. Um, yeah, if you're even vaguely interested in cancer or medicine, give it a read, it's such a good book um, and you won't you won't regret the time you spent reading it. The next one is one that you'll have seen before if you'd seen my uh, original non-fiction favourites um, and that one is Godel Escher Bark um, by Douglas Hofstadter and this is a book about the universe and patterns in the universe and music and beauty and everything, philosophy, it's just this book meant so much to me when I first read it and it is hard it is a hard book to read um but it's just so worth it and I just remember like the sense of connection I felt to the world reading this has just stayed with me um, and I really ought to give it a reread at some stage soon it's just so big um and dense and difficult that I'm a bit tentative to because of the pace that booktube tends to make you want to read at um but at some stage I will definitely need to reread that one the next one that I have couldn't not be on this list and that is Bluettes by Maggie Nelson. Um, I've spoken before about how this book found me at just the right time and I needed it so badly. Um, it's a beautiful collection of short pieces and meditations on the colour blue but more so on life and love and hurt and pain and it, it just helped me so much when I was in that place. It, meant so much to me um, that it has to be here because it changed, absolutely changed the, the decisions I made in my life. And the last one I have, I'm pretty sure was on my last non-fiction favourites list and that one is Columbine by Dave Cullen um, and I can't not have this because it's just such a well-written um, piece of non-fiction and non-fiction true crime. Um, I think it's just such a relevant book whenever you read it, especially with school shootings still being on the national stage in America just constantly. Um, and 
I've read this a few times and I just loved it every single time that I've read it. It describes Columbine so well and it's kind of that, it feels like the tip of the iceberg now I think when we look back on Columbine and what that was and, and the impact it had but I think this is required reading for anyone who is into true crime at all. Um, I've read a lot of true crime of love but Columbine is one of the ones that's like absolutely stuck by me. Um, and had the biggest impact on me definitely when I read it. Okay, so I'm already six minutes in and I've only done five books, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go. Oh, I've got fiction. A lot of my fictions are big. Like a lot of my, my fiction favorites are big books. Um, so the first one that I'm gonna show you is Judas by Amos Oz. And if you guys watched, there was a video I made where, it was a long time ago, where I read this book and it gave me like a semi-religious experience, <laughs> like, I felt so present and so alive and so joined to this story. Um, it's the story of a young man who's kind of out of place, who comes to live um, with an older man in his sort of little flat in Jerusalem with um, a woman who's very sexy and very much older and I was so in this book. I think this book's probably the one of the, one of the books that I've read in my life that has taken me so completely to where I was, um, and I cared so much about what happened. Um, I was so glad that this one won the Man Booker International um, back in 2016. It's so deserved too. Um, and if you haven't read it yet, please do. The next one that I have is a big old one, and that one is A Doubtus Almanac by Ethan Canaan. And I was kind of surprised to see this here, but I couldn't not pick it up. Every time I looked at it, I thought that needs to be there as well. Um, this is one of the books that I've read like the fastest um, recently. It's, oh, it's so hard to describe. It's about a man who is utterly and completely a genius, a mathematical genius, and his whole life is shaped around this, this genius that he has. Um, but it breaks everything around him and his family and the way he interacts with people and his views on women and his views on what the world should look like. Um, but it's just this story of a life and this story of like an intelligence that runs wild with everything else that matters. And I just loved it. I read it so fast. I couldn't put it down at all. Um, I, I read it like late into the night and I really want to read it again. I just think it was such an enjoyable reading experience and I've not really read much else like it. The next one I have is one I read this year, so spoilers for, for my end of year favourites, um, but this one is Sheila Hetty's Motherhood. Um, this is a very autobiographical feeling book um, about Sheila Hetty's narrator, who's unnamed, talking about motherhood and what it is to her and what it means to her and whether being a mother is what we think being a mother is and whether we're told such strong stories that maybe we don't know what we want anymore and um, I was reading this and I found it so hard, so challenging and had to keep stopping and thinking and it, it pulled so much more from me than I, than I thought it would um, and that's what I really ask for when I read is that kind of an experience so this one definitely has to be there if you want to explore your own ideas around motherhood you need to read this one. Next one I have is Child of God by Cormac McCarthy and this won't surprise you if you've watched my channel for a while. Um, this is just the, the lyricism of this writing, along with the story, the story's kind of horrid, but it's it's the lyricism of the writing and the beauty of the prose, it just blows me away every time, like I just opened it up, I've got red lines through the whole of this book, um, just as an example, um, in the black smoke hole overhead, the remote and lidless stars of the Pleiades burned cold and absolute, and it's, it, it gives me like full, like, oh, fuck, Jesus Christ, the writing, um, and I think it's probably one of the best, most lyrically written, but but perfectly required lyricism um, I've ever read, and um, absolutely belongs on my favourites list. The next one I want to show you is Heartbreaker by Maris Mayher, and again, if you've been here a while, you won't be surprised by this. This is my favourite short story collection, and um, my favourite story in it is one called The Fire, about a man who lights and sets in love with a forest fire. Um, her writing is very dark and can be very hard to read at times um, because it is so dark and gritty and gross. Um, I've just been lucky enough to have got my hands on a copy of Rag, which is her next short story collection, and really enjoyed that one too. Um, but Heartbreaker remains like one of those short story collections that I can't get individual stories out of my head, and I feel like that's so special for short story collections. Often they meld together, um, and I just I wish many many more people would read this book. 
The next one I have is another one that has that just blew me away that I think about all the time and that is Jose Saramago's Seeing. Um, this is a book talking about the power of democracy and what we um, are at risk of losing if we forget how important that is. Um, if, if anyone here is vaguely interested in political systems and why voting is important in America, you might want to read Seeing by Jose Saramago. It is so, so worth your time. Um, essentially, the book starts with a rainy day, a rainy voting day, um, of having quite a low, a very low turnout. Um, they think it must just be the weather and it must be some strange uh, confluence of lots of different things and, and run another vote and the votes come back blank. People turn away from the system that the government has put in place. They actually don't want to be a part of either side anymore. And it's about what happens in that case. Um, Blindness is also a book that is well worth reading, but I think Seeing is the one that gave me such a cold shock of realisation um, that I would recommend to anyone who's interested in politics. Next will come as no surprise, again, to those of you who've been around for a while, but it is Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. Um, this book, I it just, the, all the effort that I put into it at the time, and I still think that there's, there's elements of this that it's just too much to ask of a person. Um, but the themes and the ideas behind it and what this book is about, about engagement with other people and consumerism and ambition and the way the world runs and excess and consumption and all of those things, um, I'll never get that out of my head, I don't think. So Infinite Jest is one of them. And then the last one I have, this is the last, and this was hard, I, I had so many more books I could have chosen. Um, and this is the last one that was like standing above the rest. Um, it is A Little Life by Hanya Yangahara, and I know lots of people have mixed feelings on this one, but for those of you who read it and loved it, you'll know completely why it's here. Um, I think it's one of the richest stories of male friendship and experience and abuse that I've read, and there are bits of it which do feel almost too much and like your heart can't take anymore, but it draws this emotion from you and it makes you feel and, I I wish the characters in here were real in a sense because you, when you read it you kind of get that it almost you know you hope they aren't but but Jude feels so real I'm almost convinced he's out there somewhere today so those are my updated fiction and non-fiction favourites um, hope you've enjoyed I think there's some you will have expected to see and some that you may not have heard me speak about so much um, it was a challenging one to choose there were so many books I wanted to include um, and had to try and limit myself because I didn't want to talk for ages and ages and ages. It's been 15 minutes of me chatting already. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was a good way to celebrate 10k and thank you all again so much um, for being here and sticking around and watching me chatter about about things and um, hopefully you pick up one of these books, just one of them would be good. Um, and if you do, let me know in the comments down below which one it is that you decided to get to. Um, I love you guys so much and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye bye. Thank you.